Hey there guys! We just created an endpoint to refresh a user's short-lived access token as well as their long-lived refresh token. Today, I want to add a new feature that allows a user to invalidate all of their refresh tokens, which will sign them out of all potentially logged in devices or browsers. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we'll be working on today. Here's our fancy schmancy diagram we've been updating. Hopefully I've checked off all of the features we've completed. Today we're going to work on a sign out service, which is actually a pretty simple method here in the token service. We'll also be linking this up with a sign up handler so we can post to the sign up handler. And I must mention that this handler will receive the authorized user from the auth user middleware. We don't want a user to be signed or to be able to sign out unless they have a valid JSON web token or a valid access or ID token as we call it in our application. This sign out handler then will reach out to the sign out token service method, which will then reach out to a repository method called delete user, user <laughs> refresh tokens. I don't know why I say user, De delete user refresh tokens here. And so this will actually look up all refresh tokens belonging to the user making the request and delete them in a non-blocking fashion, which we'll cover here soon. As we usually do, let's first add interfaces for sign out and delete user refresh tokens. I've opened up our model folder and the interfaces.go file where all of our interfaces are defined. Let's first add the sign out definition to our token service. I'll add this sign out method right here. The sign out method will take the context and the user's ID, which will be extracted from the user on the auth user middleware, or in other words, the user that is set by the auth user middleware. This will return a possible error and we'll explain how that works soon enough. Let's now scroll down to the token repository and let's add a method to delete all user refresh tokens. This method will take a user ID as a string. And I started to notice that I use things like UID here. Sometimes I pass the user, but as far as the token repository goes, I noticed that I'm always passing the user ID as a string. That's because we're going to be using a stringified user ID to store or retrieve tokens in Redis or even delete as we're doing in this case. And again, this will return a possible error. I won't go into too much detail as to why we're using this signature until we implement this. Let's save this file and we should have some problems here for missing implementations. Let's just go ahead and open the model folder mocks and then go to the token service first and then the token repository here to update these implementations. Here in token service, let's go below new pair from user and before validate ID token. And let's add a sign out mock that basically just handles returning the error. And then let's go to token repository where we'll add at the bottom, the delete user refresh tokens. And this is a very similar signature for mock handling, which will handle the possible returning of an error. Let's save and many of the errors will go away. Now we just need to do the concrete implementations of our applications token service and our Redis token repository implementation. Let's first add the service implementation. Let's go to service now and open token service, which shows us our warning. Beneath new pair from user here, let's scroll down and we're going to add a very complex method here. So, so brace yourself. Here is the implementation for signing out. I know earth shattering and extremely complex. This is one of those, you occasionally get service methods that just relay the response of the repository method or layer. And so in this case, we're just going to pass whatever error or nil error is returned from delete user refresh tokens onto the handler by means of the return value. You still may be wondering what is this error? And that will of course be explained when we go to our repository layer, Redis token repository, 
And at the bottom, let's go ahead now and create our implementation. Okay, I've added the implementation for delete user refresh tokens. And I still keep saying user. I don't know what that is. I'm trying to speak more quietly and suave. All right, so here's the delete user refresh tokens. And it takes the string version of the user ID. The first thing we're going to do is create a pattern. And this pattern is simply the user ID star. What this pattern will let us do is reach out to Redis with our client and find any key that begins with user ID. And so the star, like in many regular expressions, just means anything can be included after the initial string. Then in this line, we're going to use a Redis scan operation to search for all keys using this pattern. Now this scan operation is called a non-blocking operation. What it will do is look for keys or groups of keys matching the pattern. And these groups should be approximately of length five. So it'll try to find five keys at a time. Now Redis can't actually guarantee if I read the documentation correctly that we'll get exactly five every time, but it will try to return five records per each scan. The zero here is kind of like if you paginate the data, meaning we start at page zero. Now, this is just for your information. I'm not sure what realistically a good value here is to use, but the Redis scan library then allows us to create something called an iterator, which helps us to automatically go through all of the scan keys and values. So let's say we actually had 15 keys for our user. We would get those keys in three different batches. And normally we might have to sort of create our own sort of loop to go through each of the batches of five results and then iterate through those again to delete each and every key. But this iterator handles that sort of, I'm just going to call it batch or pagination behavior to delete in groups of five. But once we create this iterator, all we have to do is a for loop and check while there's a next value and then go ahead and use the Redis delete command to delete the value that is found. So this iterator is a kind of a nice wrapper to handle the scan behavior. Now, why do we have this scan and this sort of pagination and grouping into blocks? It's mainly so that our Redis client does not block other requests coming through to Redis. So let's say we have a lot of users that want to access this Redis and then we get a request to delete user refresh tokens for some user and that user has a thousand or 20 million refresh tokens for some reason. In reality, that shouldn't happen, but let's say it does. Then to scan and delete all of these, if this operation blocked Redis, then another user would not be able to sign in or request their refresh tokens. So this scan operation is considered non-blocking. Other connections or requests can be sent to Redis. I guess you call them commands. Other commands can be sent to Redis while we are scanning. And then here we are deleting the various keys. A final note, you will have to then check the final key to make sure that there was no error. Now that I look at this, I might want to make sure I actually check for an error on deleting the last value. I'm going to check this at the end of the tutorial and we will come back. This fail count here basically is going to count if we have any error deleting a single key. And so if we have an error deleting this single value on the iterator, meaning the key in Redis, we'll upgrade this count. And this count, if we have any record that doesn't delete, will return an internal server error. So that's what the error is we're returning from this method. If all goes well, we return nil for the error. So pretty simple. We're now ready to go back to our handler and we'll actually go to the handler.go file because this endpoint needs to make use of the auth user middleware. So just like we kind of added the middleware auth user on the me handler, we'll do the same thing for a user that wants to sign out. So let's cut this sign out here and let's add it to 
this block, which is when we are not in test mode, so when we're in dev or production. And we can just copy and paste this line to apply our auth user middleware to this endpoint. However, if we are in a test mode, we do not want to apply that middleware. And I accidentally <laughs> copied that, so let's recopy here and let's paste and get rid of middleware auth user here. Excellent. Now we want to take this sign out handler. We will cut this and we'll go to handler and go to new file and create a file called signout.go. We'll make this a package handler and add our basic handler here. The implementation for this actually won't be too bad because this request body really doesn't come with anything other than the authorization header, which is handled in the middleware. Here is an implementation of signout. So first we will use the gen context must get method to get the user key. And this is going to hold the user from the authorization token. Now, previously we just used get, and then we checked for some error. Must get will basically check for the user and panic if it does not get the user. Because I've applied the middleware, the middleware should return an error if the user is not there before we even get to the handler. So I'm comfortable using must get to panic if we don't get the user. This is probably not the best practice ever, but I feel good about it, at least for a tutorial. We'll extract the request context here and we'll reach out to the token service sign out method. Make sure you cast the user to a model.user and then send the UID because this function signature takes the unique identifier, as you can see here. If we get an error deleting any record, we'll return that as JSON. Otherwise, we'll just return a status OK message with user signed out successfully. We're almost ready to do our tests. Before moving on, I want to mention that I asked the question whether we needed to check iter error here. And in fact, let's open the code. I had asked a question in the Redis token repository if we needed to rerun this r.redis.delete and then the error command. And that's not the case. When we run iter.next, we're already getting the next value in the loop and then seeing if we can delete that value. So this little error check is kind of just a check for the value in the iteration. So I can probably remove this fail count as that's not related to errors deleting our keys. However, it is worth noting in this example that there is a check for errors iterating here. I'm not quite sure what this error would arise or what would cause this error to arise, but I'm sort of following this example. Any comments on this will be welcome. We're back in the repository again, and let's CD up and as always run Docker Compose up so we can test this endpoint. Before we go any further, I'm going to go to our Redis here and clear out any of the previous keys that we had. So our Redis database currently has no keys. And what we're going to do to rapidly create multiple valid refresh tokens is go to Postman. And then we're going to go to sign in with just one of our users, maybe guy01. And we're gonna sign in 10 times to hopefully create 10 separate refresh tokens. I actually have lost track of how many times I've clicked. Let's hope that's at least 10. All right, let's now open our browser. And if I, there's gotta be a better way to refresh this, but I'll just change database and come back. You can see we have a lot of refresh tokens for the same user. Now let's go to this user's sign out method. And when I signed in, I made a script that takes this ID token and sets it to a variable. So the dogs are all barking right now. So sorry about that. But here's the test script. And you can see that I set ID token with this ID token payload. So if I go to sign out and you go to authorization, you can see that I am sending the auth header from that ID token. So we can simply send nobody. 
as long as the type here is application JSON. Maybe this isn't necessary, but let's just do that. In fact, I don't know that I'm checking the content type here. It probably doesn't matter, but let's just add application JSON. Oh, there it is. I don't know why I keep skipping over it. Ah, there it is. And let's send. Signed out successfully. All right, let's go back to Redis. And let's maybe change this database again. And there are no more keys for the user, so all of their refresh tokens have been invalidated. Well, guys, that one was one of the simpler lessons in a while. I hope it was a little bit of a break for you. Remember that I will add unit tests in the repository for the signout handler and for the signout service method. These are relatively simple tests compared to what I've previously done. Next time, I think we're going to work on, let's go to our diagram. We're going to work on this put details handler. This will allow us to update the user's website. What else? Their name. I think that's about it. There's just a few details. And basically, it'll allow us to update everything for the user other than their image, which I'm going to handle in separate handler methods. You may not do it this way. You may choose to do it some other way. Nevertheless, I think it will be better for this tutorial to extract these methods out separately so we can learn how to upload a file to Google Cloud. All right, thanks for joining me again. Hasta pronto.